This video is going to demonstrate upgrading Crush FTP from one major older version such as Crush FTP 8 or 9 or 10 to the latest Crush FTP. On the right hand side here I have a Crush FTP 11 that's already been downloaded, I haven't opened it, I haven't even touched it yet. On the left hand side I have my existing copy of Crush FTP 10 that's a running copy of Crush FTP. I can log into it. Here's the copy of Crush FTP 10 that's running that I'm going to upgrade. So following our own guide, I'm just going to go through the steps and show you here everything as it happens. So the first step is to take your new license key. Now this is a version 11 key I'm putting into version 10. License keys are backwards compatible. So now version 10 has the newer license information so that it will be ready to use in the newer version of Crush FTP. Next step is copying items over from your version 10 install to your version 11 install or your version 9 or version 8. The steps are always the same. So on my version 11, I forgot to copy Java to download it with Java, so I'm just going to copy my existing version 10 over. You probably won't want to do this unless your version of Java happens to be uh, the most recent version. I happen to know mine is, otherwise you should get a the most recent version of Java. Uh, currently as of this video, it's Java 21. So I've got my Java folder there. The other items you need to copy over um, are things like your users, your prefs at XML, your SSH host keys. If you want to keep your statistics for reporting, that's your stats DB. If you have any jobs you've created, that's your jobs folder. If you want to keep the logs, feel free. Logs are often one of the biggest items, so we typically don't recommend copying those over. Plus, these are your logs from your version. 10 or version 9, whatever, Crush FTP, and you may want to start with new fresh logs in your latest version that you're installing. So those are the critical items. We're going to copy those over here now. I have everything over on version 11. There's still been no downtime yet, and I'll show you the downtime as we switch versions. It's very quick, very simple, not intrusive at all. One thing to check before doing your update, check how much memory you are using. On this particular instance, I only have the default 512 megabyte set. You may also want to check your Windows services to see what login user you have the services set to run as. Let me pull that up. Checking here, I'm logged in as a local system account for the service. So I'm not using any special service accounts or network domain accounts. Uh, you normally use those to access UNC Pass, so I don't need to do anything with this. It's the default when I reinstall. Now I'm going to remove the version 10 service. removing the service and the service has been removed. Version 10 is no longer running. Now we open up version 11. And install the service. We were using 512 megabytes before, so we're leaving it the same. A service account was set to local system, so I don't need to change this here either. That's it, we're done. Version 11 is running. That was our downtime. Roughly 30 seconds, just stopping and starting. If for some reason everything was failing, your rollback plan is just you can stop version 11 and start the older version.
let's check things now. Refresh. I'm logged out now because we're in version 11, so let's log back in. Here it's version 11, we're up and running. Again, downtime is very brief. It's just a matter of stopping one, starting the other. That's it.